All right. Well, I want to thank you guys for coming out uh, to this presentation. Uh, so what I'm going to talk about is procedural workflows inside of Houdini and the Houdini engine. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk about um, how I start to use um, these three applications in my everyday work, right? And it's going to be more of like these case studies. I'm going to walk through uh, four projects that I've worked on in the past where I've solely used Houdini and the Houdini engine, all right? And my name is Kenny Lammers, and I've been working in the game industry now for about 20 years. I started out working at um, Surreal Software as an intern, and then I moved on to work at Microsoft Game Studio for a while, and then moved down to LA and worked at Activision Blizzard and worked on Call of Duty and a couple games down there, which was really fun. But I got really tired of LA, and so I decided to uh, move back to Seattle and, uh, again, went back to Microsoft. Um, in 2011, I decided to leave and start my own company called Ozone Interactive. So I left Microsoft, and from there, you know, we started doing a lot of uh, just freelance work for Amazon and Microsoft and a bunch of different types of companies and a bunch of different types of industries, too. It wasn't all just games. You know, a lot, there's medical industry type stuff, you know, just prototype type MVP demos, mobile apps, um, all of it using um, Unity and some of it using Houdini. So what I wanted to do... Um, or what I do nowadays is I work mostly solo, and um, I, I work through my name, IndiePixel. So you can check out a lot of my work at IndiePixel.com. And so because I'm a solo game developer, I have to look for ways to start to generate content really rapidly. And so Houdini and the Houdini engine really helped me do that really fast. All right. So what I want to do is I want to walk through a couple of the projects and just start talking about what I did and how everything works. Okay. So uh, first things first, what I wanted to do is just kind of like lay down a foundation for what proceduralism is. Really, proceduralism is just a, a list of steps. It's a bunch of procedures, right, that we adhere to. Um, and it, it's almost the same as like even like stuff in like Photoshop, like an action script is kind of like a procedural list of steps. You know, it's, it's a process that you take to create something automatic, right? Well, Houdini is actually a lot like that. It's a lot more powerful, obviously, than action scripts. But um, basically, we go through and we create these graphs that are basically the definitions of models, right? And the cool thing about it is that we can always go back to these graphs and change something in the graph and get a completely different result, right? So these procedural tools inside of Houdini allows us to do that. And that's one of the, the main, like, kind of fundamental principles behind using Houdini. Um, OK, so my current. Um, Procedural stack, or what I like to call the procedural stack my, for my content creation pipeline, is uh, Houdini, the Houdini engine. I use Substance Painter and Substance Designer and Unity. That's those are the four application, five applications that I use um, day to day, and it is completely a fully procedural process. Because what I can do is all my geometry is procedural. I can go in and change the shape of anything. All my textures are procedural, so I can go and update all of my textures. And that way, as a solo developer, I can go back and forth and iterate as much as I want. And I can you know, really play around with you know, levels or characters, vehicles, weapons, uh, even gameplay. All right? So that's my current stack um, at IndiePixel. All right, so where can we actually start to use proceduralism? Um, I, if, if you're starting out with proceduralism, or Houdini or anything like that, and you want to start to mess around with it, I highly recommend starting out with just like props and, and game access. Just making things like really small things like trees or taking something that you've done, like let's say a, a fence, and not doing it necessarily inside of Maya or Max. Start doing it inside of uh, Houdini, modeling it procedurally. That way you can change it on the fly really quickly. And we're going to get into an example here pre pretty quickly about how that works. But that's a great place to start is props and game assets. Another place where we can start to use proceduralism is with level layouts and asset placement. Um, this is actually one of the more popular places to utilize Houdini and the Houdini engine. And by level layouts and asset placements, I mean you take curves, right? And you lay out terrains, or you lay out roads, you lay out buildings. Um, you can even use this to lay out like triggers, collision meshes. All right, so these, these types of tools really help us start to design games. Um, so level layouts and placements is uh, the second place where I, I really use proceduralism a lot. Uh, utility tools and assembly. So utility tools are something like collision mesh type generation tools, 
um, or vertex color type tools. Let's say you get a whole bunch of models from a 3D artist and it doesn't have the collision meshes for it. Well, being a solo developer, I don't have the time to really take all those models and apply my own collision meshes to them. So I use Houdini to take all those models and create collision meshes for them or to add vertex colors. That's like a utility type of tool. All right. Um, I also use it to assemble things. So what I'll do is I'll take a bunch of like facades or let's say fence pieces and um, just draw a line and it'll take all those pre-made 3D models and just stamp it along that particular curve or it'll build a building for me, okay? So th those are like utility type tools and assembly type tools and all this stuff can be done without any programming knowledge. Now I do know how to program, um, but what I, I'm really trying to impress here is that you don't have to know how to program to start to utilize proceduralism inside of your current game content pipelines. All right, you can use Houdini. Just use the nodes itself um, to start creating procedural tools. All right? All right, so the first case study um, is the Guard Tower course that I created for SideFX Software. So they sponsored me to create this particular um, course. It's 29 videos long, it's all free and it's up on the SideFX website. So this is a great course to um, get introduced into how to start to utilize um, Houdini and the, the Houdini engine for your uh, game projects and specifically for Unity. Now the process is basically the same for Unreal, um, but I use Unity all the time, so um, I don't use Unreal that often. So I, for the, inside the course, I did it all inside of Unity. All right, so um, you can go to the link at the bottom there and um, just start watching the courses. And it'll take you step by step. It'll literally take you from the beginnings of how do I start to connect the nodes together to start to create procedural assets. And this is, like I said before, these are the, the props and assets area. This is where I usually, whenever I'm teaching Houdini to people, this is where I tell them to start. Just start small. Don't try to you know, proceduralize your whole levels because you're just going to you know, uh, work yourself into a hole. It's a great way to start to learn how to use Houdini. Just focus on small assets. All right, so let's take a quick look at um, the little sizzle video. Yeah, so throughout the course, I show how to do the high-res models inside of Houdini, um, how to go and actually create the HDAs. All right, that's a Houdini digital asset. This is what we import into Houdini. And inside of Unity, what you can do is you can lay down something like a curve and build a wall, right? Or lay down sandbags. So it helps you move really, really fast. And all that stuff is all set up with Houdini graphs, and all the nodes in there. And there's no programming at all in this particular um, setup right here. The cool thing too here is um, what you can do is you can actually, once you have a bunch of variations that you like, right, and they're still live inside of the engine using the Houdini engine, you can literally bake it out to a prefab and now what you can do is you can have a, a bunch of variations of that one particular model, right? So instead of having a 3D artist spend, you know, a couple days creating a variation of a bunch of oil barrels, right, you can literally use the Houdini engine inside of the Unity editor to create all your variations right then and there and create prefabs out of them. Oh, okay, so it's super powerful workflow. It really helps me out. Um, all right, so I'm gonna do a quick video here that actually walks you through the, the initial process of building HDAs and the the how the, the, the node network works. starts work. with the digital asset here. And a digital asset is a collection of nodes that basically assembles our procedural content here. Basically what it does is we start with a bunch of primitives. Here we have a grid. We apply some expressions to it, uh, a little bit of noise, do some grouping, and basically just run it through a bunch of procedures to end up with our final look. So you basically go through and compose all these nodes together to develop your procedural assets. So the, the end result is a component here, or what we like to call the digital asset, that allows you to go and change your content. And this digital asset can be imported into Unity so that we actually have that power inside of the engine so we don't have to flip back and forth between our DCC content packages. So once you're done here, we flip over back to Unity 
we import the HDA, and here we have the same result. We can go and change the parameters on this guy, and it all updates appropriately, like so. And you, all you need to do is just go and drag out another HDA if you want another version, just like any other game object. But this is a game object that has a bunch of parameters, so we can provide it a different type of mesh. It doesn't have to be an oil barrel. So this is where I'm providing an actual 3D mesh, mesh that's been pre-made into the actual here. HDA tool. And right, so it doesn't have to be a procedural right. asset across the board. You yeah. can start to now create these right. hybrid procedural model techniques. techniques. So right, where you can have a fully procedural levels. model or you can have a procedural and tool that takes in 3D meshes and generates the variations the for your kind of you workflow. You then get prefab that you can use over and over again. And let me reset, reset that here. Just drag this out. And there we go. So now we have a clean so fake down track that is just the geometry. So then what I would do at that point, right, is I, I would right. create another HDA so that would generate all the collision asset. meshes for and that particular really thing. It would just surround that particular set of oil barrels. Really is the core component to everything that uh, Again, this course is available for free up on the SideFX website, and, and all the too. assets, too, are available for free, so you can pop open the HDAs and, you know, see how I built all the actual uh, node networks. Um, it's a great way to learn to see how other people uh, do it. It's how I learned. All right, so... Moving on, uh, my next case study is a VR game that um, I just got done working on. We didn't actually finish it because the, the client, I think, actually ran out of money. But um, we got pretty far. We created three levels. It's pretty interesting because this is the first time that I used uh, Houdini to create literally everything uh, for the project. I, and I'm talking about the, the vehicles, all the weapons, um, all the terrains, literally all the assets for this particular game here. So let me play the trailer for you guys. And then I'll show you some of the assets. Oops. Hold on a second. There we go. Sorry. All that build up. <laughs> Project. The reason why I had to use Houdini in the Houdini engine before it was because I was the only person working on the actual game. I did all the programming for it. Um, I did all the content creation for it. I did all the audio engineering for it, all the UI. Um, and so it was crucial to be able to generate levels procedurally. It was crucial to be able to generate the weapons procedurally. Now, the weapons themselves, we'll get into that, this a little here in a little bit, is more of a hybrid modeling approach, but by using Houdini, I was able to, to generate weapons literally in a day. The high-res versions of the weapons, run them through Substance Painter, and then I'll have, I'd have a model ready to go, and I would just set it up the next day inside of Unity. Because, I mean, I had to spend a lot of time working on all the, the AI for all that stuff, all the UI stuff, all the audio stuff. And, it was quite an undertaking. It took me about four months uh, to put all that stuff together. All right, so here's uh, one of the objects. And actually, hold on a second. Let me back up here. I was going to pop open Houdini really quick for you guys and show you those particular models in there just so you can see the actual graph. I should have actually opened this up before. Um, but while that's loading, Let's do this here. So this is the, the dropship from the game. And so basically the way it works is a more of a hybrid modeling approach for vehicles when you start modeling vehicles inside of uh, Houdini. I, I set up the basic shapes, the, the major shapes of the actual vehicle model. And then what I do is I create a lot of utility HDAs to create the paneling lines, to create things like the piping that you see in there, um, to add a lot of the detail work to it, um, to merge things together. So uh, the process, uh, really starts like with the artist still, right? But you have to process it through a bunch of other HDAs and it'll generate the paneling lines for you and add a lot of the detail work for you. So it's, it's a lot faster. The, this particular model only took me about two days uh, to generate um, from end to end, you know, starting from just the, the block end all the way to Substance Painter and, and then into game. 
All right, and then we have the, the rail gun here. And now I want to make a course about how um, I do the, the weapons because I think it's really cool. But it's the same process. Again, it's a, it's a hybrid modeling approach where you lay out just the really rough base shapes and then uh, create a bunch of HTAs that do paneling lines and detail work and um, add things like the, the bolts and stuff like that. And I, I must say that the new Boolean tools inside of uh, Houdini are really sweet. Uh, they work really, really well. And there's a new course coming out um, that I just got done um, that is free also, uh, sponsored by Side Effects, and I'll show you guys the, the trailer here at the end. Uh, so let me open up the, the dropship here. It's, it's kind of fun to see this stuff. We'll kind of roll through the, the graph really quick. All right, so here's the, the dropship model inside of Houdini. Um, so the way this works, and the, the reason why I really, really like to use this particular uh, workflow is because, again, it's all procedural, right? So that means I can go back at any point in the modeling process to any step that I had done and change something, and it'll propagate through the graph, all right? There's never a point in my modeling process where um, I'm completely hosed with my model, like where I really have to like just delete a bunch of geometry and start modeling it again, right? The whole thing is completely uh, procedural in the sense that I, my construction history is constantly live, all right? So if we take a look at, you know, the steps that I took, I started with a box, you know, and then just started creating the base shapes here. Let me actually turn on my wireframe for you guys. And then did some Boolean work just to, to cut out some of the base shapes. And you can go back at any point, like I was saying before, you can go back at any point and change any one of these particular uh, nodes to fix something up or to change the shape or something like that, right? And it'll propagate through the whole graph. All right, so that's why I have to use uh, Houdini to create all my assets for my games because I don't have time to go back and make large edits to my models. I need my models to constantly be live and procedural. All right, so let's go to the, the last step here. And we'll take a look. So that was the main body. Uh, and then we come down here and add a little bit more detail. And you can tell that only half the model is being modeled right now, right? So I added in the wings there. And then finally, I had the, the final blocked in shape. All right, so it's a really quick uh, introduction to all that stuff. Um, I obviously, I have all these other nodes here that process a lot of that geometry and do the final looks. And again, I have a course that shows how I did this whole particular process. All right, so it's the same for uh, something like the, let's do the shotgun here. Same process. And I really highly encourage you to start messing around with it because uh, it'll save a ton of time uh, for vehicle modeling, for weapon modeling. There we go. So it's the same process uh, using the construction history right here. So if we take, go through each one of these steps, you know, just create some of the base shapes and just build it up over time. And then for the high res and the low res, so the high res basically is actually being processed through VDBs. That way I have a, a completely watertight mesh. So when I bring it into Substance Painter, I don't get any back face hits for my normal map bakes or any of the bakes uh, for that matter. Um, so VDBs are really cool for uh, creating the high res models inside of Houdini. And it's gonna take a little bit to process here. That is one of the downsides to the VDBs is they actually take a, long, a little bit of time to, to process depending on the type of resolution you've set for it. It's almost done. All right, so now we have a completely watertight mesh. All right, so I just wanted to show those guys. Thought it'd be interesting to see you know, how some of the weapons were made there. All right, so let's jump back into here. Let's get back into the, the slideshow. It's not working. Oh, do I already have, I already have it rolling? Yeah. All right, so moving on. All right, so that's more about like how a 3D artist would go and start to use uh, Houdini. It's, that's kind of the introduction to you know using uh, Houdini in your everyday 3D content creation type of workflows or pipelines, right? Um, 
So what I did is I, I created a uh, racetrack building system called ProTrack. I'm not sure if you guys ever messed around with it. It was a couple years ago. Um, but this is an example of how a technical artist can start to work with the Houdini Engine API uh, using C Sharp to develop tools inside of Unity that sit on top of the Houdini Engine. All right, so what you can do is you can really start to manage the scene inside of Unity and inside of the Houdini Engine and just create these wrapper tools that allow you to work even faster with the, the uh, Houdini Engine. All right, so let's go and play the video for this guy. And so what I wanted to do, it, really ProTrack basically was a scene management tool. So all these tools were developed using uh, the techniques that we've already seen. We, I built a bunch of graphs that um, created roads and created um, you know, like foliage and rocks and scatter tools and stuff like that. But what we found, my buddy and I, what we found when we were starting to build uh, the ProTrack tool set uh, was that it became quite laborious to work with all the HDAs in the actual hierarchy in, inside of Unity. And so uh, what I did was I, because I have experience creating tools uh, for Unity, editor tools for Unity, what I did is I, I wanted to start to create a way to remove all that dragging and dropping that you do inside of Unity from the designer standpoint, right? Because my buddy Noah is a game designer. And so I created a, the ProTrack tool set so he didn't have to actually go and drag out the HDAs, right? The, the, the editor tools themselves actually created the tracks. It, it was actually dragging and dropping for my buddy, right? So it automated all the process. So it's just another level up from um, using the Houdini engine straight up, all right? And it's actually quite simple. Um, it's, the unfortunate part is that the Houdini Engine API isn't that well documented. So um, well, it's funny because I had to actually roll through all the C Sharp scripts inside of Unity and literally like read the code to see how it all worked. Um, yeah, but I figured it out and you know, was able to start to interact with it back and forth. And it's changed since then. And ProTrack currently needs to be updated to the current version of the Houdini Engine too. Uh, this is back in the early days of the Houdini engine uh, because I started working with side effects to do a lot of just like beta testing for it and stuff like that and so I created ProTrack as one of the demo tools. It worked out quite nice actually um, for a time. And so we were able to generate you know tons of tracks every day you know while we we're designing uh, the tool set and, you know I would have Noah just test it out during the day. Um, as I would make uh, edits and stuff like that to the code base. It also would lay out all the, the triggers for the, the track, so that's the, another example of a type of utility type of HDA that you can create for um, Unity and the Houdini engine. I mean, the, the possibilities are really endless. Uh, once you get really familiar with the nodes inside of Houdini, you really start to mix and match them to, to create pipelines and workflows that you work for your project. All right, so that's ProTrack. That was a fun project to work on. All right, so then the, the last case study um, was a game that, again, Noah and I were working on called Skatecraft. And um, what we wanted to do is we wanted to you know, take the skating genre up, and, an, up a notch, right? And because we had been messing around with proceduralism for a little bit, and this is back in, I think, 2014, uh, 2015, something like that, um, we were like, okay, so you know, the current skate games, whenever you go into their park builders, they just have static assets that you go and you, they just plop them down. It's just an instance of each one of those static. You can't go into the actual unit and actually change anything you know, on the actual like, ramp. What if I want the ramp to be just a little bit higher? What if I want the, you know, the transition to be a little bit tighter, a little bit wider? I want the rail to be a little bit higher. And that particular you know, prop isn't given to you by you know, the game and like in Skate or Tony Hawk, right? And so what we did is we, we used the, the Houdini engine to initially prototype how the procedural park units would actually work, right? And once I figured out how the system would work, I then went and created the procedural geometry code base to generate runtime procedural assets, because the Houdini engine doesn't actually run at runtime yet, right? It actually gets, all the code gets stripped out when you hit play in the editor, okay? So what I needed to do is I needed a way to create these assets that we created in the Houdini engine, but inside of Unity and at runtime, so you can actually skate them. And so that's what I did, is I, I used the Houdini engine to prototype how I was going to design my code, basically. So it was an interesting use case for um, uh, using Houdini and the Houdini engine before I just dove right into the code and started making you know, a bunch of classes and you know, designing how I was gonna create all these procedural assets. So I have another video because 
they're fun to watch. So this is an example of the, um, this is a WebGL demo, just the, the park building assets. And so this is basically an example of right when I got the system finally completed and we were starting to show it around to people and we were showing it to side effects as well. And so basically it lets you go and just create park units however you want. You know, we just give you the basic version like a rail and a, you know, a half pipe or um, a fun box. And you go and you make the, the park however you want. Right? And so I then made the, uh, the physics-based skating system. And then once I got that all done, we actually imported it and called it the crafting system. So I didn't want to call it the park builder. We had to be unique, right, and clever. And so basically, I went and created a whole system that allows you to go and plop down procedural assets. In this case, that's a static asset. But I'm going to go and create a, one of the procedural rails here in a second. And they completely work. You, once you get out of crafting mode, you can come back and you can actually skate in. So the whole idea for the game, and we pitched it to a lot of people, and a lot of people were interested in them. We weren't actually able to ever get any money for it, but a lot of people were really interested in the concept. Um, but yeah, you can pop back out of crafting mode and go back into skating mode, and it's completely different. You can go back and forth and completely change all your park. And the whole idea was that we we're going to save it out and let other people skate, and you can create challenges for your own park, right? That way, no, no two skate parks would ever really be the same because they're procedural assets, you know. You can do this type of stuff with a Houdini engine, but like I said before, just not at runtime. All right, so this is one of those examples of using the Houdini engine to prototype my runtime systems. So, it was a fun project. It was really fun. One of these days, I, I hope I actually get to make it, like the whole thing. It'll be sweet. All right, so where can you go and learn all this stuff? Well, I picked some of the top places to go. Obviously, one of mine is you know at the top, and that's totally biased and you know shameless plug. But you can go to indiepixel.com, and um, I'm constantly throwing up new content um, and new courses, some free and some paid. Um, you can go up to Side Effects. I highly recommend if you're brand new to this, go up to SideEffects.com uh, and the Learn website and start there because I have a bunch of great beginning tutorials up there that'll get you at least into Houdini, working with the nodes, starting to create the Houdini digital assets, and just working back and forth with Houdini Engine and Houdini and Unity or Unreal, whichever one you choose. Um, Rohan, Dolby is amazing. Um, Untagma, they're super awesome. That's really advanced stuff, but um, I highly recommend just checking it out because you can go up there and they, they do some amazing geometry generation type of algorithms and stuff like that. Um, and Anastasia, she's awesome too. She does amazing work as well. I highly recommend checking out her um, Lake House course. Again, it's an intermediate slash advanced course, but once you get up there, definitely watch that one. It'll blow your mind for sure. So um, I'm going to play the um, next course that is coming out from IndiePixel that has also been sponsored by Side Effect Software. And it's all about how I did the vehicle models um, for drone damage. So here's the trailer. Uh, when it's done, you guys are more than welcome to ask Howdy questions. Howdy guys, Indie Pixel here, and I'm super excited to announce that I have completed another course that has been sponsored by SideFX Software. And in this course, what we're going to do is we're going to actually learn about how to model a sci-fi vehicle completely inside of Houdini. Now, one of the, the core goals of this particular course was to look at how we can create more of a hybrid modeling approach to proceduralism. What I really am trying to impress throughout this particular course is how you can start to take elements of proceduralism and apply it to your current modeling pipelines just to expedite the process of modeling a particular type of vehicle. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna look at how we can create individual tiny tools. Again, like I said, to insert proceduralism into our pipelines just to speed up the modeling tasks that we do over and over and over again. 
All right, so we're gonna take a look at how to use Booleans. We're gonna take a look at how to set up the piping structures that are all created procedurally in this case. And we're gonna just take a look at a bunch of different types of techniques to allow us to rapidly create and iterate on our particular models. You know, by the end of the course, what we're gonna do is we're going to end up with the model that you see here inside of Unity and inside of Unreal. So we're gonna walk through that process. Throughout the course, you're also gonna take a look at how to lay out UVs for the dropship using a couple different techniques. So we're gonna cover how to lay out UVs using the flatten UV node and also a couple of auto generation type of UV techniques. Plus we're gonna take a look at how this terrain is set up. And we're also gonna look at how to prep your models for Substance Painter, so that way you get the actual vertex color masks produced for you. All right, so by the end of the course, what we're gonna do is you're gonna have a full overview of how to create terrains inside of Houdini, how to create the vehicles inside of Houdini, how to create Houdini digital assets to take care of tasks like piping and detailing and cuts and paneling lines. And we're also going to end up by taking a look at how to set up the post effects inside of both Unity and inside of Unreal. So by the end of the course, you'll have this complete overview of how to set up vehicles using Houdini and procedural techniques. All right, so um, I finished it literally like a week before SIGGRAPH, so we're still getting the, all the videos up online. So uh, we're hoping to have it up here pretty soon within like the next week or two. And so um, ch definitely check it out. Um, I'll be posting the actual link on IndiePixel.com and on my YouTube channel. Um, definitely check out my YouTube channel because I'm constantly posting uh, free videos on Houdini and Unity and Substance Painter and all those awesome packages. So thank you guys very much for coming out. Thank you.